I am Alexandra Boltaseva. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering and at Burke Nanotechnology Center at Purdue University. And I work with nanophotonics, plasmonics, and plasmonic materials. So what we do in our research, we are looking into a novel approach in the area of nanophotonics that deals with nanoscale metallic particles and metallic structures. So the greatest uh, property of the metallic structures at nanoscale is that they actually help us to focus light, to bring light down to nanoscale and make our optical devices smaller and to integrate more functionalities into a single optical chip. The problem with plasmonics is that historically the material building blocks that we've been using to build our devices are gold and silver. So those are great materials in terms of their optical properties and what uh, optical functionalities they give. However, they do have drawbacks that prevent them from actually entering the area of practical devices. So we are looking into expanding the realm of materials that can serve as building blocks for these nanophotonic devices. Because the problems that we are facing is that metals are not compatible with CMOS industry, so we cannot just bring them into the industry and integrate into existing semiconductor production lines. Those materials are expensive. They are very soft, so they cannot withstand higher temperatures or harsh environment. And if we think of any applications that are relevant for nowadays, uh, technologies such as energy conversion or harsh environment sensors or anything which is heat assisted, we need robust materials to do that. And one of the solutions is to look into new classes of ceramic materials that do show properties that are similar to metals in the optical wavelengths region, but they bring a lot of advantages. So they would be extremely stable, uh, mechanically, chemically, thermally stable. And they're also compatible with biomedical technologies and CMOS processing lines. So we are also looking into other types of materials that can greatly expand the realm of materials we are using for nanophotonics and plasmonics. And those are complex oxides such as transparent conducting oxides, indium tin oxide, dope zinc oxide. So these are great materials that were somehow overlooked in the area of metal nano optics and we are trying to bring them in and study their exciting optical properties in their optical and the near infrared telecommunication window range. They do have very high transparency, so they don't absorb a lot of light, which is one of the major problems in this field of research. They do allow us to tailor or adjust their properties so they, we can design our material to fit a specific need of our practical design application. And they also can provide a tool for dynamic switching or controlling the optical function of the device by electrical or optical means. The problem, as I see it, is really in the gap between the communities. So there is a community of plasmonics or nanophotonics, and there is a, a community of material scientists. And those people do not talk to each other very often. And even if they do, they, it's not all about the same challenges or the same things. So as I see my research field is about uh, bridging this gap and actually bringing the expertise and methodology that people have developed in material science when they are optimizing and finding new materials into photonics because we know what we need for our structures so that we can actually ask and talk to material scientists what are the material classes that could provide this best functionality. So one of the applications that um, I can name would be connected to energy. Well, energy is everywhere. It's one of our grand challenges, renewable sources of energy. Solar thermal photovoltaics is one of the most promising approaches that actually promises us very high conversion efficiencies 
from, let's say, sun energy or sunlight into electricity. So what it does, in contrast to standard photovoltaic or solar cell, it, it actually absorbs a very broad spectrum of a sunlight. And then you're using a clever design photonic structures to re-emit it selectively in a very narrow spectral range so that after that, it's effectively absorbed by a photovoltaic cell. The problem and the challenge in this area is not to design the structures. We can do that. There are plenty of designs in photonics of how to make broadband absorber and a narrow band emitter. The problem is in materials. Because when you absorb a lot of light, things heat up. And they being heat up to a very high temperature, 1500 C or even higher. So even if a material is thermally stable, like tungsten, there would still be oxidation and some of the unwanted deformation and changes in the optical properties that would be detrimental to the performance. So by finding materials, as we found, such as transition metal nitrides, so example would be titanium nitride or zirconium nitride, that have a highest melting temperature, it's close to 3000 degrees C, we can actually design those structures that would not deform so that it would have detrimental effect on their performance. So in this case, materials are really enabling a technology. So we will not move forward in um, enhancing the ways to harvest energy without looking into materials that are stable at high temperatures. The field is extremely exciting. And I think the beauty of this field is that it potentially impacts so many different areas. So I already mentioned that we can impact integrated optical circuitry. We can de design subwilliams photo detectors. We can design a denser data storage devices, uh, microscopes with a resolution that goes far beyond what is achievable today. We can design single molecule sensors, novel approaches for drug delivery and photothermal therapy. We can design novel co energy conversion schemes and uh, impact quantum information technology. The emerging area of so-called flat photonics, which is based on the fact that those metallic nanostructures can be arranged in a single monolayer in a very clever design to refract and redirect light in any possible way, is extremely interesting because it really gives students a way to rewrite the basic laws of optics.